Hello, I'm Sandy Winard, and this is my son Zach Rawl. Hello. Today we are going to be carrying on a family tradition that began with my grandfather uh, Giuseppe, aka Joe Minio, and that was whether it was a family picnic, whether it was out in the backyard. Uh, my grandpa was all about cooking outside. Al fresco was something not new and trendy to him. It was how he grew up in Sicily and Bagaria cooking outside on the farm. So today that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna prepare uh, a, a meal for you uh, that you can do outside, inside. You can do it on your patio, at the park, uh, at the lake, the beach, wherever. And my grandpa would get up early in the morning uh, for family, big family picnics and uh, get out to the picnic site with uh, whether it be a charcoal grill or a little Coleman stove. Uh, it was all about cooking food that most people wouldn't think of bringing to a picnic. It wasn't just hot dogs and hamburgers, it was pasta and sugu and a Sicilian steak. Uh, and that's what it was all about. So I'm kind of updating it and doing a little contemporary twist today. <coughs> Excuse me. And instead of meatballs and sugu, we are doing Parmesan chicken meatballs and they're gonna be simmered in a tomato sauce uh, with some melted fresh mozz on them and then served under over some uh, soft cheesy polenta. So we're gonna start off with the meatballs and again, everything's gonna be done on the grill. And if you're cooking outside on the grill, make sure you have cookware that will sustain the temperatures that you're gonna be cooking at and something even including the handles that's not gonna melt. I have a blue carbon steel pan. This will go up to, uh, and it's hot, can't touch it, but this will go up to 1200 degrees. I'll try showing you a little bit here. It's kind of, it's called a plancha, or that's basically used for paella. And I have another pan over here, and that's just a saucepan that I have with my water, some olive oil, and some kosher salt that we'll be cooking the polenta in. So we're gonna start off with, first of all, the meatballs. And the meatballs, uh, again, these are chicken meatballs. So I have ground chicken. Uh, with this, there's some ricotta cheese because with the ground chicken, you don't have the fat content of other um, animal proteins. So we have, uh, there's some ricotta in here, there's chopped parsley, onions, garlic, the usual suspects, an egg. Uh, and since this guy is gluten-free, I have adapted a lot of recipes uh, to gluten-free. So I actually use gluten-free breadcrumbs. So you mix that all together. Um, you may need to, we'll have the recipe available for you. You may need to add a little bit more or less breadcrumbs. You can kind of tell depending on the humidity and uh, the fat content. I use whole milk ricotta. Very, very, very uh, particular about using whole milk dairy products and making things like this. So we're gonna start off, and Zach, yes. you can start. This recipe, this is about a pound and a half of ground chicken. This should make about eight good sized meatballs. You wanna make a meatball? Uh -huh. You know how to do this. I think I remember. How. I think you remember. I think you probably knew how to make a meatball before a grilled cheese sandwich, right? I still don't know how to make a grilled cheese sandwich <laughs> if you ask me. And we'll just set them right here. Does that need to be bigger or is that yeah, good? Well, you can maybe add a little bit more. Little bit more. It's up to you. Why I mean, not? they will. there will be some shrinkage in them. Uh, basically, this should make, like I say, about eight good size, smaller than you kind of want them to be maybe a little smaller than a, a, a official hardball that you'd use for baseball. Yeah, that yeah. looks great. All right, so we made our meatballs. And by the way, uh, this is a double batch because we have some friends coming over later for a little late afternoon Italian lunch. Mm -hmm. So we have the meatballs. The bees like our meatballs. They definitely do. And I'm allergic to bee stings. So bees anyway, have good taste. There. <laughs> so put those down. And Zach, you want to hand me the polenta? Where do you put want? Put the, the meatballs back. All right. And hand me the bag of polenta. Uh, uh, I have the water boiling. And we're going to start with, I have uh, this is four and a half cups of water, a quarter cup of olive oil, and some salt. And uh, whatever kind of polenta. This is not the quick cooking, so this is going to take about a half hour. I like the uh, the real authentic. This just happens to be Bob's Red Mill, but any any kind of good quality polenta. So we're gonna get that going because that's actually gonna take the longest of everything that we're preparing today. So let me kind of whisk that in. Perfect. All right. So now for the meatballs. Of course, some good quality olive oil, put this in my pan. I can tell this isn't uh, even or level because I see my olive oil kind of moving around, but that's okay. 
that's okay. Just make sure it's kind of, if you need to move your pan around, get the olive oil, maybe about three tablespoons. Again, this is chicken. So we're not gonna have a lot of fat in this. Zach, you wanna bring over the tray of meatballs? I definitely can. And these are very light and delicate, so you can hear the sizzle. Now you may say at some point, how long, how long are you gonna cook these? You're gonna brown them on all sides. And just like anything, um, it's not about cooking the time. Sometimes it's all about cooking the temperature and obviously how sometimes things look. So the bee's trying to be my, my sous chef here. No bees were harmed in the making of this. No bees were harmed. <laughs> I think these, this is a good sized pan for this. We, like I say, we made a double recipe. So, and these will, these will cook down a little. And as you can see, um, I tend to lose my patience with making them all the same size. You kind of want them to flatten out a little bit, not perfectly round, because you, you really want these to cook on all sides. You might not be able to fit these all in here. These might be, uh, put these aside for a chef's treat for breakfast tomorrow. All right, you can put those down. All right, so we have our polenta going back here, simmering away. We have our chicken Parmesan meatballs. And we're gonna, like I say, brown those on all sides. If you see you've got a hot spot, I have my grill set up that I've got hotter in the middle and I've got it a little uh, cooler in the back where my water is going. I'm just gonna bump it up a little. So we're gonna let these simmer away as soon as they, you can kind of see how they're going. You don't wanna move them too soon. Like any time, any kind of meat, you can tell usually they'll self-release when they brown, yep, oh, these are getting really nice. Nice and golden brown. And like I say, you're gonna kinda wanna flip them over. Uh, you can use a cast iron pan, another good seasoned pan for this. I would not recommend using a non-stick pan. Most non-stick pans are gonna tell you that they're only good up to uh, eh, probably like at the very most, like 400 degrees. So you really wanna be careful that you're using something. And this also, oh yeah, you can see right here. Ooh, I like that. See that? Nice and brown. Nice and brown. That's your There we go. Don't try this at home. <laughs> no. And there you can see they're going to get a nice golden brown crust on them. Uh, the temperature, and we'll check it later with an instant read thermometer. Uh, besides being golden brown, you want to make sure that you get these to 160 degrees. That would be a good internal temperature to ensure that for safety reasons. Because then what we're going to be doing with these is once these are all brown, we're actually going to make the tomato sauce with this right in the same pan. And then uh, towards the end, we're going to melt some fresh mozzarella on top. Ooh, so stay with us and catch us on the, on the flip side. And there you go. Okay, as you can see, our, uh, our chicken Parmesan meatballs here have a lovely gold sear on them. I just temped them. They're just about getting to the internal temperature of 160. So at this point, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to cook the sauce right in the pan. So the first thing we're going to do is add a half a cup of chopped onion. Zach, yeah. you want to give me I can some definitely onion? Do that. Here you go. And uh, I'll put, eh, this looks like a little bit more. I'm just going to put it around in here. It smells delicious. Doesn't it? I know. Man. Wait till we sit and eat it later. Oh. How about the garlic? Yeah. As you can see, my plancha, again, another name for a flat griddle pan like this is super hot and the garlic now the garlic for this recipe sliced garlic you can either use a straight old razor blade to get it this thin or a really good sharp parry knife but you really want you really want the garlic sliced for this recipe okay there you go now before i add my tomatoes i kind of like to have these kissed up a little bit with heat because the sauce is going to simmer I think my grandpa would approve of this. What do you think, Zach? I definitely do. I like that spoon that you're using. This? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, you're not going to be able to buy this in any store. Really? You know why? <laughs> why is that? Because Grandpa Joe actually made this. He carved it out of a piece of wood. You don't say. Yeah. He would, car he would make all his own tools like that. He would decide that there wasn't anything that could do what he wanted it to do, a tool that he could find. So he carved this out, and I still have it today. I always use it when I stir subu or anything like this. Because if you are using a non-stick pan, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't scratch. 
I just be careful not to soak it in water and I, I do oil it with mineral oil. So this is this has been around for a long time, longer than I have. So tradition lives on here in this pan. All right, so this is kind of, you don't want it to get burnt or too brown. So the other thing we're gonna do with this is we are gonna add 28 ounces, Zach, you wanna hand me that? Certainly. Of um, tomato puree. Again, grandpa would probably cook his own. Here, I'm gonna hand you that. Yep. I'm gonna put this right in here. Zach, I think I have a black, uh, could you hand me that spatula at the end there? I can awesome. Okay, that's gonna go in there. Here's another, uh, here's another one of my grandpa's uh, kitchen hacks right here. You don't need a spoon rest. That's the original spoon rest, the can from your uh, tomato product. The other thing is this does call for uh, water, about a half a cup of water, but you know what? We're gonna go with wine. I'm all about the taste of wine. I think with the chicken and the ricotta and the polenta, the wine is gonna do it. So Zach, you wanna give me the, today we're gonna just use some Lambrusco in that measuring cup there. Yep. I normally don't measure when I cook, I do when I bake, but sometimes for a recipe like this, it's a good idea. Don't add too much, you're driving tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There you go, the rest of it we'll have with the lunch. There you go. And then of course, some freshly cracked pepper. You can really see how a quality pan like this, if you if you take a look, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see even though I'm probably not on a totally level surface, it's sizzling and simmering all around the pan. Some kosher salt. All right, so what I'm gonna do at this point is we are literally gonna let these meatballs and this tomato sauce so that's another thing to take into consideration. If you're not sure whether your meatballs are gonna fit in whatever vessel you're using to cook in and the sauce, you know, figure out, pour water. You know it's a 28 ounce can of uh, tomato puree. Fill, uh, take 28 ounces of water, put it in there, and if it's too high and you figure, oh boy, that's not gonna do it, because once you put the meatballs in, it's gonna go over the top. So we're gonna let these simmer. I'm gonna give the polenta another this is getting there because you really want you want the polenta because again we're going to be adding some unsalted butter and some freshly grated uh, for the polenta today you can use a, a parmigiano reggiano i like to use uh, a grana padano which is uh, an imported cheese from italy it's very nutty and i have some of that already grated later that we will add add in with some butter and then we'll be serving our meatballs and this slow simmer sauce over it so there you go We'll see you on the flip side where we're ready to plate this up and enjoy a wonderful lunch under the sun. Okay, let's see how everything's going. What do you think? I think that's a good idea. Okay, usually about 10 to 15 minutes is how long you want to wait after we did... Oh, my goodness gracious. Woo! Butt on! Woo! Look at that. Yum. And uh, one thing you probably didn't see me do before either after uh, we got off camera is I put a, a sprig of fresh oregano in there. We're going we're gonna to pull that out. And now at this point, you can see our sauce. The meatball sauce is really reduced. Oh my God, it's nice and thick. See how it's kind of caramelized oh. around the side? Perfect. Oh, it's delicious. Oh man, and we're gonna, we're gonna serve this in family style. So at this point, you can never have enough cheese. So you can kind of see through this where all the meatballs are. Mm. So what we're gonna do at this point is on top of each meatball, we're gonna put a piece of fresh mozzarella. Cause you know, you can never have enough cheese, right? We're Italian and this is Wisconsin, so bring it on. Because this is going to melt on top of here just like it would on a, on a margarita pizza. Yum. Imagine that, exactly the same amount of pieces and fresh mozzarella as we have meatballs. It's a miracle. It's the universe telling us we must do this. It's a universe. All right, at this point, waiting for that, we're going to take off our polenta. Let's put this towards the middle. The nice thing about using a gas grill with a thermometer on it is you can control your temp. So we're going to close this up. 
We're gonna let the, the grill take care of melting down that. So the polenta's done. At this point, we're gonna put in four tablespoons of unsalted butter and unsalted because we're also gonna put in cheese. So we're gonna put in that butter, butter. And then uh, freshly grated, I did this on a microplane. And a lot of times when I add cheese to something like polenta, I like to do it on a microplane because you get it really nice and fluffy and soft. So we're gonna put all that grana padano in there. And we're going to, I forget sometimes when I grill that this might be super hot, so. And you can see how hot this is because that butter, look at that. Creaminess, cheese, butter, yum. Whisk that up. Zach, you want to lift the grill and see how uh, see how our cheese is melting? A little bit longer on the cheese. Woo! Yeah. All right, good. Fog on my glasses, man. All right, so we're going to wait for the cheese to melt. We're going to plate this up for you, and then you know what? There you go. We're going to have lunch. Okay. All right, let's check and see. Oh, perfect. Oh, yum. Doesn't that look good? All right, let's 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 plate this up right now. Uh, we're going to start off with our polenta. As you saw before, I added the cheese and the butter. So we're going to put our polenta. Look at how that slides right oh, out. God. That's so satisfying. Isn't it? Look at that. So there's our our uh, creamy cheesy polenta. All right. So the way we would serve this then, take this right off the grill. Look at that. Turn this off because it is hot out here. Very hot. All right. So this is very very easy to plate. Basically, what you want to do is you want to, like I say, this really lends itself to family style. Ooh, look at that gooey cheese. Put your meatballs right on top of that. And you can see this tomato sauce is very thick. It's not like a sugu or a marin, you know, anything of that nature. You want it to be a real thick tomato, almost like a tomato confit, if you know what that is. So we're just going to plate this up. All right, and one thing my grandpa always had this in his garden was was basil. So, uh, red, white, green. What does that? What do you think when you think of those two colors? <laughs> Mexico. Try again. Oh, 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 France. <laughs> the third time's a charm. Don't tell me it's Italy. <laughs> so you just tear tear some fresh basil, throw it on the top. Because what's better? It's like a caprese. What's better than fresh mozzarella and tomato and some uh, fresh basil? All right. So there you have it from beginning to end uh, for your family. Again, whether it's on the patio, whether it's even in your kitchen, whether it's anywhere, uh, family picnic, feeding the family, our little multi-generational uh, homage to my grandfather, uh, Giuseppe Jominio. Chicken parmesan meatballs over creamy polenta. Enjoy.